Chapter 499, Not a Word. Spinus had spoken in perfect human language, without any ripples or weird accents in his voice. One would think he was human, if not for his distinct features. Vertebrae had made sure to train Spinius in every single aspect from his childhood. Despite speaking in the human language, it was an entirely different sound that reached the ears of the civilians. It was as though the artifacts were automatically translating every single word he said into the bone race's language, which the majority of the civilians would understand. It was very clear that Vertebrae had thoroughly prepared for this event. Human. The fronts of each hover car suddenly ignited in unison, their lights shining directly on Atticus. Despite the sun's intense light, the golden lights were still very visible. If it hadn't been clear before, it was now evident that they were here for Atticus. You killed our third prince, Zecheron the Unyielding. That affront will not go unpunished. I stand before you as a warrior. You have killed an important member of our race. You must face the consequences. None of these able warriors will interfere. Fight me, and the winner will take the loser's head. Spinus suddenly stretched out his right hand, a golden folded paper appearing in it. Window, pub future tag, pub future tag. Window, pub future tunit 648C3C5604B32703F9C2, ID, PFT, Jeff. Atticus's gaze narrowed slightly as soon as he saw the item that had just appeared, but he wasn't the only one. The gazes of the students watching, especially the tiered, also narrowed in shock. That paper, it was a mana contract. A wide smile marred Vertebrae's face as he fixated his eyes on the screen in front of him. He was still at the top of a high and imposing skyscraper, hands still clasped behind his back. Words could not begin to express how happy and proud Vertebrae was of Spinus. His words, his actions, his demeanor, the intensity in his voice, it was all perfect. What made him even more excited was his declaration at the beginning. It's a good thing he declared it now. The masses, whether willingly or unwillingly, will have the subconscious notion that he is the apex of our race. It's perfect. This was exactly what they needed to kickstart their takeover. Vertebrae had made sure to keep Spinius away from Mortrex's eyes over the years, but it was very obvious that this would reveal practically everything to him, including Spinius. However, after this, Spinius would become far too loved by the masses for Mortrex to do anything. This wasn't the human domain where anyone with power could just do whatever they wanted. For the bone race, the majority of them would rather die than be forced to serve a person they didn't want to serve. This had been one of the reasons for their numbers being whittled down to this extent. If not for the emergence of higher-ups who chose to accept the humans' terms, they would have gone extinct already. So this is your replacement, huh? Mortrex said, drawing Viviana closer and planting a kiss on her cheek. Both of them were still at the top of the massive skull, a large screen showing Spinius and Atticus facing off. However, Viviana's expression remained impassive, not even responding to the kiss. Her eyes were fixed directly on Spinius on the screen, her expression unreadable. Mortrex sighed. Why don't you just go introduce yourself to him? Seeing no response, Mortrex shook his head. I really fell for a weird one. The eyes of the Academy's instructors shot up, many of them immediately standing in protest. This is outrageous. How dare mere slaves try to use a mana contract on our youths? The majority of the protesters were first-year instructors, who were the most supportive of Atticus. The other years were also enraged, but eventually decided to keep quiet. They each turned their gazes towards Isabella, expecting her to be even more incensed by the unfolding situation, but were immediately shocked to see her looking at the screen calmly instead. Many were baffled, but didn't pawn, dare on it for too long. They turned towards the second person they felt would be in support of them and instantly regretted it. Window dot pub future tag, window pub future tag, window win dot pub future tag, push, unit 664C1898C0V8C641D6. ID PF-9092-1. He had somehow found another cart of food, a wide grin on his face as he started munching. His gaze was fixated on the screen, and it was clear to everyone watching that he had absolutely no intention of interfering. Many turned away from the lost cause, focusing on Isabella once again. But as they were about to speak, 
they discovered the reason for her silence. Stand down. No one is allowed to interfere. A voice suddenly resounded across the room, causing the instructors to pause. The voice left no room for argument. It was straightforward and succinct. Hearing Harrison's command, despite feeling reluctant, they settled into their seats. Isabella remained unfazed throughout the scene, as though she had already expected this to happen. Of course he was planning something, she pondered. The entire space was enveloped in another palpable silence after Spinius's declaration, broken once again by him continuing to speak. Yes, your lives aren't actually in danger, so why should you sign this? Spinius unfolded the paper, swiftly biting his finger and drafting a contract. It's admirable, having people that would stand by you even during the worst of situations. As he finished, he folded it back and created a small platform made of bones beneath it. With a thought, it started moving slowly toward Atticus. Spinius's voice suddenly took on an icy tone. You have two options. Sign this and fight me one-on-one, -on -one, or watch as I torture each one of your companions until they beg me for mercy. Spinius's words were followed by the warriors of the Osara family, each unleashing their thick auras in a collective and resounding show of force. The message was clear. Sign or face the consequences. Ember held her spear tightly, the temperature of the surrounding area decreasing rapidly. She stood in front of the group like a silent goddess of ice. Zoe instead wore a baffled expression as the sound of Lumindra's laughter echoed in her head. Ha ha ha! What the hell? She just couldn't understand why her petite spirit was laughing during this situation. Aurora had long since joined in, her whole body enveloped in searing flames, with Orion standing just beside her, gripping his two swords tightly. Kale's clothes tore as he suddenly grew in mass and height, the red aura enveloping his figure exploding. Everyone was watching. From Magnus and Oberon, with the latter sipping a small cup of tea ever so slowly, to Mortrex and Viviana, to the civilians of the Bone Race, to Vertebrae, they were all focused on one individual, Atticus, each of them curious to see what he would do next. Everyone watching expected him to react in a multitude of different ways, explode in anger, window.pub future tag, window.pub future tag, window.pub future tag, push, unit, 648C351443270 f 9 bcb ID, PF4629-1, immediately attack without even caring to speak, try to escape or talk his way out of the situation. Some even assumed he might commit suicide so he would get teleported away. However, Atticus did none of these. Instead, everyone watching the screen couldn't help but be baffled as Atticus simply raised his arm and tapped his artifact, not uttering a word. Chapter 500, Step The area was eerily quiet, with only the sound of a finger tapping the screen permeating the space. The tension was so intense that it was hard to describe in words. Spinius had already unleashed his aura, his thick expert aura descending on Atticus and the others. The others showed visible reactions, tightening their hold on their weapons, their auras exploding in an attempt to mitigate the weight. But Atticus showed nothing. Spinius had just spoken, making multiple declarations that should have deserved an appropriate answer. However, all he got was the scene of Atticus raising his hand and tapping his artifact. The small bone made platform carrying the mana contract had gotten close enough to the group, but Spinius was so baffled that he unknowingly made it stop. But it wasn't only Spinius who was baffled. The different crowds watching the scene showed confused expressions on their faces. One couldn't blame them too much. Many of them didn't bother with learning the rules of the summit, choosing instead to enjoy the battles. To them, Atticus's actions appeared like those of a madman. But for his companions and the students who had actually bothered to read the rules, window.pub future tag equals win.pub future tag window pub future tag dot push unit 648ccc564b273f9c2 id pf-463-1. A small smile appeared on Hella's and Lucas's faces as they watched the scene. Finally, Nate screamed a second later. One could only imagine what had happened that made Nate read the rules. Zoe, Ember, Aurora, and Sirius shook their heads with small smiles, and Kale's aura dimmed ever so slightly. Zoe had been baffled at why her petite spirit was laughing, but now she understood why very well. There was only one reason any one of them would be tapping their devices during this situation. 
Yet, despite all these baffled reactions, Atticus still kept on tapping on his artifact silently, his face expressionless. Did he just threaten his loved ones? Atticus was finding it hard to come to grips with this fact. It was so baffling that he wanted to laugh, but not a single chuckle escaped his mouth. Because of the massacres he had just committed, plus the one from earlier, Atticus had been able to gather a significant amount of points. He was glad to find out that regardless of whether it was a target or not, the 500 points gain remained unchanged. Before he had unleashed both massacres, his points had been a measly 35 SP. But now, summit points, 14,535 SP. Many would be envious or at the very least show a shocked expression. But instead, Atticus calmly navigated out of that section and straight to his locked abilities section. Then, Atticus only unlocked two things. The first was his rank. According to the pricing, it would take 3,000 summit points to rank up to the next rank, with an addition of ending at 2,000 plus 3,000 for any subsequent rank up. This meant that Atticus would have to pay 3,000, then 4,000 for the next rank, and 5,000 for the next. Atticus tapped on this twice, advancing to the advanced rank, feeling an overwhelming amount of mana coursing through his veins. Atticus simultaneously unlocked the next item, an ordinary-looking sheathed katana, appearing in the air in front of him in the next instant. Spinius's gaze narrowed, his heart beating oddly fast. What is that feeling? He suddenly felt a slight chill engulfing his whole body, with no idea of the source. But it wasn't only him. Sweeping his gaze around the area, he couldn't help but notice many of the warriors of the Osara family turning their heads left and right as though searching for something. Am I missing something? Spinius's perception wasn't at the level where he could perceive the strength of an individual at just a glance. At most, he could only perceive the aura a person was emitting, and with Atticus's innate ability to conceal, he couldn't tell his actual current rank nor did he know that he had just broken through. He had a bad feeling about this. But despite the feeling, Spunius didn't act on it. Didn't show any form of weakness here. Millions of the people of the Bone Race were watching. Instead, Spinus's aura exploded, the weight engulfing Atticus and his group intensifying. They had each only unlocked their ranks to the advanced rank. An expert rank was far too strong. They felt their legs buckling, their figures trying hard to withstand the pressure. But regardless, it was as though Atticus wasn't even affected at all, despite most of the aura being focused on him. Spinus's gaze narrowed even more as his aura exploded once more. He needed Atticus to sign that mana contract before the battle, or else he wouldn't be able to get the finishing that would satisfy the people of the Bone Race watching. The increase in aura made standing harder for the group, but it didn't stop Atticus's actions for even a second. The katana landed soundlessly in Atticus's outstretched palm, and despite the intense situation, Atticus still chose to fix it slowly to his waist. His whole demeanor was the personification of calm and serenity, akin to a tranquil lake. It was as though he was currently in the middle of a peaceful and beautiful body of water. Nothing could rush or break his calm. Atticus suddenly lowered his arm and raised his head upward, gazing at the figures of the warriors that surrounded the area. The chilliness they felt intensified. And then, Atticus slowly took a step forward. Oh, Magnus, you're not even trying to mask your excitement. Just what are you anticipating? With a small sip, Oberon turned towards Magnus and remarked with a small smile. The latter currently had his hands gripping the armrest of his chair tightly, eyes focused on Atticus on the screen. Magnus cleared his throat awkwardly. He had lost himself for a second there. Seeing as Magnus had no intention of responding, Oberon shook his head and took another sip of his tea. Turning back to the screen. Chapter 501. Blocked truly. It was a normal step, but as Atticus took it, an overwhelming and oppressive aura, surpassing the intensity of Spinus's outburst, descended upon the entire vicinity, brushing aside his aura like an insignificant breeze. Atticus moved forward, walking past Ember and standing in front of the group who had already been freed from Spinus's aura. With an air of calculated indifference, Atticus spoke, You will torture my companions? His voice maintained a calm, measured tone, almost conversational. 
but those who heard it felt pressure the likes of which they had never felt before. The hearts of the Osara family warriors in the area trembled, their grips on their weapons tightening instinctively. Spinius wasn't excluded. He quickly clasped his hands behind his back, intending to hide his arm that had suddenly begun shaking. His warrior heart was screaming at him. It was a feeling honed from the life and death battles he had fought and endured during his life, the sort of feeling one gets when they meet an opponent who wasn't in or close to their league. The area which had been silent became even more silent, the sounds of the rustling of leaves or chirping of birds disappearing. Window.pub future tag equals window.pub future tag. Window.pub future tag push unit 648C3564 3270 3F9C2E22 dash 1. Only Atticus's words echoed through the ears of the audience. It was as though the intensity of the moment reached every location. The city of the bone race was enveloped in a palpable silence, the students mirroring the same scene. To those who had seen it before, to those who had been subjected to his wrath, they knew it instinctively. This was a new level of anger. Throughout all the times, no one had ever seen Atticus smile when anyone angered him. And yet, there was a small smile on Atticus's face as he spoke. It was unnerving, a feeling that engulfed the entire student watching so intense that the cheering of Nate and the others came to an abrupt stop, each of them silently focusing on the screen. They all instinctively knew what was about to happen would be intense. Spinus's heart was beating fast. He just couldn't understand what was going on. He felt as though he was making a huge mistake, but unfortunately for him, it was far too late to stop. It wasn't about him anymore, nor his petty revenge. He currently had the hopes of the people of the bone race resting on his shoulders, he couldn't falter here. Spinius's hand clenched, forcibly calming his beating heart, before responding, Yes, but if you sign the contract, nothing. I see. Atticus interrupted Spinius's words before he could finish, his voice the epitome of calm. The first word of Spinius's response was everything he needed. With a deliberate and effortless movement, Atticus's right hand reached for his katana, hanging on his left waist. The world slowed. The sky seemed to darken. The hearts of Spinius and every single member of the Asara family froze as their hearts stopped beating in unison. Hundreds of miles away, the eyes of Mortrex and Vertebrae, standing at the tops of high points, suddenly narrowed into pinpricks, their heads snapping towards the direction Atticus had fled in, their figures vanishing into thin air in the next second. A voice, still maintaining its perfect calmness, suddenly sounded, each word dripping with chilling indifference. Katana series, second art, endless blade. In an instant, Atticus dissolved into nothingness. The very air seemed to shatter as a multitude of blue streaks filled the space, weaving a mesmerizing tapestry of light. For a heartbeat, all was silent, as if the world itself had stopped to witness the spectacle. The blue streaks cut through the space with lethal precision, slicing through everything in their path. Each streak found its mark, a blur of unstoppable force that phased through every single inch of the Asara warriors in the area. Instantaneously, a figure suddenly appeared in front of Spinius, materializing out of thin air, followed by a K, taclysmic impact. The force of the collision released an explosion akin to a nuclear detonation, a deafening roar that shook the very earth. The ground quaked, shockwaves rippling outwards, sending debris and dust skyward. The final vinyl brilliant blue streak abruptly stopped, its lethal path interrupted. The world regained its normal rhythm, the hearts of the spectators beating so fast and intensely, it was as though their hearts wanted to burst out of their chests. The figures of Zoe, Ember, Aurora, Kale, and Orion performed mid-air flips, their bodies skidding down the earth trying to stop their momentum. Magnus grinned from his throne, the smile on Oberon's face remaining undisturbed as he took another sip of his tea. The dust cleared, the eyes of many almost bulging out of their sockets as they witnessed the unfolding scene. A fountain of blood rained from the sky as each one of the Asara family warriors burst out in a fountain of blood and gore. The sounds of drops of crimson blood hitting the earth akin to rainfall were punctuated by the explosion of the multitude of hover cars that were suspended in the sky. Another intense wave rocked the space, sending debris and scorching heat flying across the area. 
a translucent purple dragon construct radiated out from Zoe, covering the whole group and shielding them from the onslaught. And yet, despite all of these mind-numbing things happening, every single eye was focused on one spot in the sky. On the same spot where the final brilliant blue streak had abruptly been stopped were the figures of three individuals. First was the figure of the trembling Spinius, his whole body drenched with so much sweat that a small pool had formed on the bony platform he was on. On the other end was Atticus, whose hand had turned bloodied because of the unmovable force that had stopped his attack. And just between them was a man. The man was topless and had a compact physique which seemed to brim with power. His head was completely bald, coupled with his golden beard, trimmed to perfection. To the people of the bone race, he needed no introduction. Mortrex the Indomitable, the Osark of the Bone Race, had appeared on the battlefield. Chapter 502 Domain The silence was out of this world. The shock that enveloped every single person watching this scene was insanely palpable. Mortrex the Indomitable had appeared on the battlefield. None of the students watching knew exactly who he was, but his presence was undeniable. They knew someone powerful had appeared, an opponent, Atticus couldn't take lightly. But it was different for the millions of people of the bone race watching. There was no one among them who didn't know who this man was. But none of them even had the time and opportunity to comprehend the situation before the hundreds of small artifacts suspended in the air streaming the events suddenly imploded. Simultaneously, the hundreds of screens that the people of the bone race were watching the events through abruptly disappeared leaving the distraught masses in a state of confusion. The majority of the civilians still in the city immediately began running towards the gate and into the forest where Atticus had fled, intending to find and join the battle. Their Osark had appeared. They must also join the battle. Since the small artifacts had been destroyed, the audience spectating the scene had reduced considerably, leaving only the millions of students of the academy and the instructors watching. Gone had long since found a seat. He was no longer commentating and was instead gazing upwards at the sky absent-mindedly, daydreaming about how he would spend the money he had just won. Window.pub future tag equals window.pub future tag window pub future tag dot push unit 648C3643273F9CE2 ADPF4630-1. Once again, they all watched in silence. Mortrex's presence was expansive and thick. It was as though an unknown, powerful being had descended on the battlefield. It was so heavy that everyone, Atticus included, found it hard to breathe. Atticus's gaze narrowed, his instincts screaming at him like a blaring horn. He ignored the incredible amount of pain emanating from his right arm, his figure suddenly distorting before disappearing. Instantaneously, he reappeared thirty meters away from where he had been before, sheathing his katana soundlessly. Atticus didn't need to be told, nor did he waste a single second. His body moved smoothly and swiftly, sturdy water forming beneath his feet as he got into a stance in the air. A drop of crimson blood fell from the sky, hitting the earth with an imperceptible sound. It was just a single drop, but to some people, it carried great significance. No one was left unmoved by the power Atticus had just unleashed or the magnitude of the massacre that occurred. But the shock that enveloped Viviana and Mortrex alike could not be compared. It had been brief, but she had seen it clearly before the screens disappeared from the city. Mortrex was bleeding. What is that weapon made of? Mortrex's gaze narrowed slightly, fixing on the sheathed katana at Atticus's waist. The sturdiness of a Grandmaster's body was something that many couldn't dream of comprehending. The gap between a Grandmaster and the lower ranks was so large that even a Master Plus rank's strongest attack couldn't hope to hurt the body of a Grandmaster. It was that large. And yet, a boy radiating an aura of an advanced rank had hurt him? Viviana's expressionless gaze darkened as a platform made of bones materialized beneath her feet. From the middle of her chest, a white, viscous substance streamed out, immediately engulfing her entire body. In an instant, a radiant white armor formed, her figure resembling an incarnation of a white goddess. The bone platform shot upwards, a multitude of bone-like spikes materializing behind her. A dangerous glint passed through Viviana's gaze, and with the speed of a bullet, she shot forward, 
leaving a trail of sonic booms in her wake. Mortrex raised his arm, focusing on his bleeding finger. He had used a finger to stop the attack, an action he felt was sufficient given the power level of the attacker. But at the end of the day, he was a Grandmaster rank. The wound didn't even take a second to close up, as soon as it formed. However, he didn't have time to ponder the matter, as an overwhelming thick aura suddenly descended upon the area, followed by a roar, How dare you! Vertebrae bellowed, his raging voice making the earth tremble. Atticus and the others felt their eardrums vibrate, threatening to burst. Vertebrae suddenly appeared between Atticus and Mortrex, his seething gaze focused directly on Atticus. To the people in the area, the aura was already familiar. Another Grandmaster had appeared. The perception of a Grandmaster was hard for normal humans to comprehend. Before he had even reached the scene, he had already seen and understood the state of the situation. The warriors of the Osara family, hundreds of youths whom he had painstakingly raised and trained from their childhood, the future of their lineage, had all been killed in a matter of seconds. The intensity of the rage Vertebrae was feeling was akin to the eruption of a volcano. Vertebrae erupted, his full Grandmaster rank aura immediately blanketing the whole area. Atticus felt danger, the likes of which he had never felt before. He had never been one to hesitate. Immediately upon Vertebrae speaking, his hand had already moved to tap his artifact. Atticus had gained an incredible amount of points from the massacre he had just committed. From the very first time Atticus had killed Zecheron in the forest, he had discovered that depending on the strength of those he killed and his own strength, he was rewarded accordingly. At intermediate plus rank, Zecheron had given him more than 2,000 points, but now he had killed almost 500 Zecherons at advanced rank. Atticus was insanely rich in points. Atticus didn't bother to check as he unlocked everything. From his rank to his exosuit, a black suit enveloping him instantly. Atticus was many things, but a coward was not one of them. He was not one to cower, even when the odds were stacked against him. Atticus's aura suddenly exploded, his katana moving slightly from its sheath as he prepared to attack. Just as the aura was about to hit, it suddenly disappeared as though it were an insignificant breeze. As though the weight of the world had suddenly descended upon him, Vertebrae's figure plummeted from the skies at fast speed, hitting the earth with a cataclysmic impact. Am I a joke to you? A voice boomed at the next instant, its intensity palpable. Vertebrae found himself pinned down face first on the earth by Mortrex's aura, unable to move an inch no matter how much he struggled. I am Mortrex the Indomitable. How dare you question my authority? Mortrex's chilling gaze fixed itself on Vertebrae, his aura exploding as it increased in intensity once more, causing Vertebrae to sink deeper into the earth. Vertebrae's hand clenched, his teeth gritted hard. Despite both of them being in the Grandmaster rank, he knew deep down that he wasn't a match for Mortrex. No one was. He couldn't even lift a finger, and this was just his aura. Blood streamed out of Vertebrae's palms and teeth, his eyes turning red as he stopped fighting back, his aura receding. This embarrassment will not be forgotten, Vertebrae promised inwardly. Seeing this, Mortrex released his aura, freeing him. Take your son and leave now, Mortrex commanded. Vertebrae listened, appearing in the sky beside his frightened son. He suddenly turned, his seething gaze meeting Atticus's cold one. This will not be forgotten, he said. Before Vertebrae could disappear, he received a response from Atticus that made his heart tremble. I will end your family. Vertebrae locked eyes with Atticus for a second, before suddenly vanishing without a word. The area descended into silence for a moment, the gazes of Mortrex and Atticus meeting in a silent clash. The impacts from the explosions had already sent the others a significant distance away from the scene, but the arrival of multiple powerful individuals didn't go unnoticed. The group had gotten on Zoe's dragon construct, about to reach the scene before Zoe abruptly stopped midair, 50 meters away from where Atticus and Mortrex were, her worried gaze narrowing. What do you mean there's no need for fusion? I can't help him without transforming. Zoe questioned. Calm down, Zoe. I don't feel any hostility coming from him. I don't think there's a need to do anything. Just observe. You can always step in if anything happens. Zoe was reluctant, but her spirit was never wrong, and she knew that very well. 
She turned and explained everything to the rest of the group. Mortrex observed Atticus with scrutiny, his mind racing as he attempted to comprehend what he had just witnessed. So you're the reason for this whole thing, Mortrex suddenly spoke. Atticus's hands still held his katana tightly. He had already unleashed everything. From aerokinesis to burst, he was ready to go at any time. Atticus didn't offer any response, causing Mortrex to narrow his eyes slightly. He had seen everything. Atticus might have been using conceal, but unfortunately for him, he couldn't hide his rank when he was releasing his restrictions. Mortrex had seen the burst of mana every time he leveled up. Despite looking older, Mortrex could tell that Atticus could not be more than 16. An expert plus rank 16-year-old, it was insane. Multiple thoughts flashed through Mortrex's mind before he finally decided on what he wanted to do. I am Mortrex the Indomitable, the Osarch of the Bone Race. Mortrex suddenly bellowed, his voice permeating the space. Human, I hope you will remember this favor in the future when you stand at the top. Atticus's expression changed, but before he could comprehend his words, Mortrex suddenly spoke, his words cutting through the tension like a blade. Domain. The most up-to-date novels are published on. Chapter 503, Fierce Domain. It was a single word, one many normal individuals would utter in their everyday life. It had different meanings, especially for the unknowledgeable. To them, it was a simple word. But to the knowledgeable, in the world of the elites, the weight of the word domain was immeasurable. To grandmasters, a single utterance of that simple word was akin to a descending apocalypse. No one had the time to react. No one had the time to even blink. There was only one entity in the area, apart from Mortrex, who knew the significance of that word and the devastation of what was coming. But despite being a Tier 7 spirit, not even she could protect Zoe due to her inability to withstand and utilize her full potential. A subtle and swift wave emanated from Mortrex, spreading out in every direction. Window.pubfuturetag equals window.pubfuturetag. Window.pubfuturetag.push unit 648C3564 3273F92E2 ID PF46 The earth beneath neath their feet quaked tremors spreading like a heartbeat through the ground. The atmosphere itself seemed to tremble, the very air shivering, as though dreading what was to come. As the aura spread, the heartbeat of every being in the vicinity, even that of Atticus, synchronized with the rhythmic pulse. The world itself seemed to pause, not a single soul moved. In that instant, time itself felt as if it had come to a halt, holding its breath in reverence to the power unfolding. The subtle wave of energy suddenly converged around Mortrex, swirling and coalescing before erupting with a force that shook the heavens. A surge of energy burst forth, painting the sky with a stark white hue, blinding in its brilliance. From this explosion of light, a frigid cocoon, vast and all-encompassing, unfurled. It swept across the landscape, its brilliant tendrils reaching out and ensnaring Atticus within its grip. Simultaneously, a multitude of golden light ignited, engulfing Zoe, Ember, Aurora, Kale, Orion, Zizizius, and Gerald within them. In the next second, they each disappeared from the area. The screen on which the millions of spectating students and instructors alike were watching the unfolding scene suddenly blackened for a second before flashing and changing the view. Loud murmurs echoed across the whole Colosseum as each of the students stared at the new live footage on the screen. Instead of the figures of Atticus and Mortrex being shown, or at the very least the area they had been in, the screen was instead showing a bird's-eye view of a vast region. For more than 500 meters, in the middle of the forest, was the form of an expansive, pristine, white, smooth cocoon. What is that? A random student asked. I have no idea. I heard domain before everything turned to shit, another replied. Look, the rest of the participants are appearing. Many students turned towards the direction the student had just pointed to, their confused gazes landing on the figures that were suddenly appearing at the top of the platform. Zoe, Ember, Aurora, Kale, Orion, Zazius, and Gerald suddenly found themselves on a platform surrounded by millions of murmuring students. Zazius and Gerald landed with brutal thuds on the floor, the former still limbless and the latter severely injured. The artifact would protect the students from death but wouldn't heal their injuries. Luckily for Gerald, the restrictions on his powers had been lifted, and the sun was shining in the sky. 
He healed at a visible rate, but even after healing, he didn't get up. He simply stared at the sky blankly without saying anything. Zizizius mirrored the same action, with Sonorous instead frantically touching his face as though scared he would lose it. Seraphin was sprawled on the ground, his body completely battered and covered in crimson blood while clutching his neck. But Gerald didn't even seem to notice. He was far too lost in his thoughts to care. Just one knee. Those words resounded in his head constantly. And lastly was the deformed figure of Dante Starhaven, sitting quietly on one side, E. Aside from the newcomers, the rest of the participating students had all appeared on the platforms, including the rest of the first through third years. The Alvirians hadn't joined Zazazius because of Lila's warning, but they had already been eliminated before the showdown. Fighting wasn't really their fort. The same was the case for the Nebulon family, too. And yet, Zoe and Aurora quickly noticed an oddity. Atticus wasn't amongst them. They each instinctively turned their gazes towards the large screen at the top, and upon seeing the large pristine white cocoon, their expressions turned worried in an instant. Lumi, what happened? Calm down, Zoe. His life isn't in danger. Those artifacts are more powerful than you give them credit for, Lumendra suddenly responded in a calming tone. So what ha? It's simple. You were all too weak, Lumendra suddenly interrupted Zoe's words. What you see on that screen is the peak power of a Grandmaster, a power you need to achieve before you can enter the ranks of a privileged few. A domain, Lumindra explained. The simple activation of a domain is enough to end the lives of a bunch of advanced ranks. Your lover boy not being here must mean he was the only one who withstood it and is currently inside it. Lumindra allowed Zoe to absorb her words, not saying anything. Why can't we see what is happening inside? Zoe asked after a second. A domain is the world of the Grandmaster who unleashed it, so you really think your measly recording artifact would be able to bypass that? Lumendra's words made Zoe shut up, her worried gaze not changing one bit. She clutched her hands together on her chest, focusing on the screen. It should be fine. He still has his artifact, she reassured herself. But Zoe was far from being the only one who was worried. Aurora's heart was beating fast, the feeling of uselessness engulfing her once again. Aurora had wanted to help out in the battle with the army of students, but she knew inwardly that it was better she stayed out of it. Even during the escape from the Bone City, she did nothing, only allowing herself to be saved and carried along. Many might be okay with it, claiming that Atticus was just too powerful, Tep, but Aurora didn't feel okay one bit. She couldn't. That wasn't the kind of companion she wanted to be. She didn't want to feel useless. Things will have to change. Aurora's gaze suddenly turned fierce. Chapter 504. Bone Desert. The only ones who didn't really show any visible reaction were Ember and Kale. They both still had their weapons in their hands, gazing up at the screen ever so calmly. Ember and Kale had never been ones to panic much. The former trusted Atticus that much, while the latter just couldn't find a reason to panic. Their artifacts weren't for decoration. The confusion among the students intensified when they also found out that Atticus didn't appear on the platform with the rest. They each murmured, coming up with different speculations, before deciding to simply focus on the screen and wait. There was no one among the instructors who didn't know what a domain was. Many of them were in the process of trying to form theirs, after all. The number of instructors that stood up as soon as Mortrex deployed his domain was staggering. Many were shocked beyond words. Why the hell was he using a domain against a 16-year-old? But as though remembering Harrison's words, they each sat down without uttering a word. Isabella and Jared didn't bother to stand up. It was as though they knew it would be pointless. Just like the students, they chose to focus on the screen. A window at pub future tag equals window dot pub future tag Window pub future tag dot push unit 648C33F9C2E2 ID PF463D-1 Darkness. That was what Atticus could see. Even when he saw the cocoon unfurling, Atticus's gaze didn't once blink. He immediately knew that there was no outrunning it and decided instead to maintain his alertness. His hand clutched his katana tightly, his life weapon vibrating in an assuring manner. His stance remained undisturbed. 
his piercing blue gaze with a hint of crimson in his irises fixed ahead from under his exosuit. Then, Atticus waited. But he didn't have to wait for long as the scene suddenly changed and Atticus underwent a series of afflictions. The air suddenly became heavy, the temperature plummeting as a new scene manifested in its full, awe-inspiring glory. Bones rose from the ground, forming towering dunes and jagged outcrops. Skeletal trees appeared, their branches rattling in the frigid wind. The landscape transformed into a vast, eerie desert, shimmering with a spectral light. Atticus's gaze flashed, his mind working at high speed as he attempted to comprehend everything that was happening. The desert stretched as far as the eye could see, an endless sea of white and pale hues. The ground was a mixture of fine, powdery sand and countless bone fragments. Around him were massive dunes composed of both sand and bone fragments that shifted with the wind, creating an eerie, ever-changing landscape. Here and there, large skeletal remains jutted out from the sand, some resembling rib cages of colossal beasts, towering vertebral columns, or skulls the size of boulders. But this wasn't all. Sparse, skeletal plants dotted the landscape, their structures resembling twisted bones. The climate seemed to shift every second. At one instance, a certain bleached brightness would radiate the space, the sun beating down mercilessly, bleaching the landscape to a blinding white, creating a dazzling, almost otherworldly brightness. And at another instance, the temperature would suddenly plummet as the desert took on a ghostly appearance under the moonlight, with shadows stretching long and the bones gleaming in the silver light. Atticus was completely and utterly speechless. He could feel an intense amount of weakness acting upon him, as though being in this space alone was draining him. What is this? There was only confusion in Atticus's mind. This was the first time he had ever encountered something like this. But he didn't have to ask, as in the next second, as though he could read his mind, a voice suddenly spoke, Welcome to my domain. The voice came from every conceivable direction, and despite that, it sounded in unison. It was as though a god had spoken. Atticus didn't utter any words, his hands still clutching his katana. He recognized the voice that spoke. If he hadn't before, he knew now that there was no escaping this unless Mortrex himself wanted him to. Relax, if I wanted you dead, you would be all ready. Mortrex's next words were the push Atticus needed to reach his next conclusion. He released his hold on his katana, releasing his exosuit. There was no hostility coming from Mortrex, and if he had heard Mortrex's last words before the deployment of his domain correctly, then he should be expecting a favor from him. Atticus faced no one in particular and suddenly spoke, What is this place? A domain? he asked. The ground a few meters behind Atticus suddenly swirled, the sand and bone fragments swirling upwards together until the pristine white figure of Mortrex was formed. Yes, this is my domain. The rapid climate changes suddenly stopped, the bright radiance of the sun shining down on the space. Atticus's head snapped backwards, his gaze fixing on what had just spoken. It looked like Mortrex down to the last detail, but Atticus could tell that it wasn't the real him. Feeling Atticus's stare, Mortrex continued, I call this the Bone Desert. It is a manifestation of my power and my experiences from the day I was born. Here, I control everything you see. Mortrex's words were followed by the climate abruptly changing once again, the temperature plummeting as the desert took on a ghostly appearance under the moonlight. Atticus frowned, his confusion evident. Seeing this, Mortrex decided to explain further. A domain is a representation of an individual's power, a level of mastery that only those who have attained a profound understanding of their abilities can achieve. Within this domain, the laws of reality bend and conform to my will, like so. Mortrex suddenly raised his hand, and instantaneously, the bone dunes around the area began to shift and change. The ground beneath Atticus's feet trembled as a multitude of massive skeletal rib cages rose from the sand, forming an imposing archway. These rib cages, each the size of a tree trunk, curved upward and met at a high point above, creating a grand, eerie gateway. Mortrex continued, This archway symbolizes the gateway to my power. Every single thing here is under my command. As a grandmaster, my domain mirrors the theme of my abilities, in my case, the complete control and creation of bones. 